Self-discipline. The only thing you need to combat procrastination. When you are struggling to pull yourself out of bed, self-discipline. When you're struggling to drag yourself to your desk, self-discipline. When you're struggling to start writing that assignment you've been putting off for weeks, self-discipline. I receive emails every day asking if I can help them with procrastination. And I can coach them and teach them 101 different study methods and memorization techniques and productivity hacks, but it's all meaningless without self-discipline. There's no magic wand that I can wave that will magically make you study. You have to do it yourself. You have to make yourself do it. You see, motivation is temporary. You might watch this video and be motivated for the next 30 minutes, or three hours, or one week, or even a month, but eventually your motivation will fade. And that's okay. That's completely normal. Your motivation can and will go up and down. But when your motivation starts to fade, that's when your self-discipline kicks in. That's when you need to force yourself to get up and study. And it's at this point that a lot of students fail because they rely on motivation to carry them in the long term. But that's not how it works. I learned this the hard way. For years, I would get short spurts of motivation and I'd study like crazy for days or even weeks on end. But as soon as that motivation started to dwindle, I just didn't have the self-discipline to back it up. So I would quickly slide back into my procrastinating, lazy self. But I managed to shift my mindset. I managed to train myself to slowly but surely, over the course of a year, build up my self-discipline. I used to find it difficult just studying for 30 minutes without losing concentration. Now I can study for 14 hours a day, and it's actually relatively easy. So, how did I fix my self-discipline? How did I manage to build up my self-discipline and train myself to study even when my entire body was telling me that I should go back to the comfort of my own bed? There were three super easy but effective steps that I took. First, I removed distractions. I noticed the biggest thing distracting me when I was studying was my phone that I usually place right next to my laptop. Whenever I received a notification, I would stop studying and check my phone. It's such an obvious thing to do, but for years, my phone was a huge reason why I procrastinated so much. So I started to hide my phone behind my laptop screen so I couldn't see it when I was studying. Out of sight, out of mind. and. It worked. Another thing I realized I was doing was that I was waiting to feel ready to study before I actually started studying. So I kept putting my studying off for hours because I never felt ready. And before I knew it, it would be the end of the day and I still hadn't done anything. So I made my studying a habit. I would wake up at 5 a.m. every morning and I would go straight to the gym and then I would go straight to the library. I would do this every single day, even on Sundays. I wanted to train my brain into knowing that this is just what I do now. When a behavior becomes a habit, we stop using our decision-making skills and instead function on autopilot. At first it felt wrong. Your brain will resist waking up at 5 a.m. But eventually, you will program your mind into accepting it and it will start to acknowledge that it's right and natural to wake up at this time. And that's exactly what happened to me. At first it was difficult waking up at 6 a.m. every morning, but you'd be surprised at how easy it started to become after just a few weeks. I made sure that I was asleep by 10 p.m. the night before, every single night. Now that's important. Many students struggle to wake up at 5, 6, 7 a.m. And of course they will, if they went to sleep at 3 a.m. The third thing that I did to train myself to become more self-disciplined 
was I rewarded myself every night. Self-discipline doesn't mean your new schedule has to involve your studying for every second of the day. In fact, giving yourself zero wiggle room often results in failures, disappointments, and going back to your old ways. While practicing self-control, schedule specific breaks, treats, and rewards for yourself. If I studied well during the day and I concentrated well and I didn't procrastinate, for one hour that night, I would just relax and read a book, or go out with friends, or even just watch Netflix for an hour. It's important to know when to relax and when not to. If you've had a productive day and you've got a lot done, then make sure you reward yourself. In the long run, you'll thank yourself for it. So, now it's your turn. Stop letting your self-discipline get in the way of where you need to be in life. You know what you need to do to fix it. So fix it. Because you won't find anyone on this planet that is massively successful that doesn't have extremely high levels of self-discipline. It's one of the most important underlying factors that determines whether or not someone will be successful in the future. If you can't even bring yourself to study, how are you going to manage the thousands of hours of working on your craft to become among the best in your field of work? Whatever you want to become. You can't win the war against the world if you can't win the war against your own mind. Whatever your dreams and goals are, self-discipline is how you're going to get there. You need to respect yourself more. Because if you respected yourself, you wouldn't let yourself procrastinate the entire day. You wouldn't hold yourself back from achieving phenomenal success. If you respected yourself, you would do what's best for you. And that means not watching Netflix for four hours a day. It means not scrolling through your Instagram feed 50 times a day. It means not hanging out with friends when you know you have deadlines the next morning. You're worth more than that. One of the common similarities that I notice with most of the emails I receive from students is that they have put self-limiting restrictions on their own academic performance. They don't believe they can climb to the top of their class. Therefore, they don't even bother trying. They're not even trying to implement self-discipline because they don't believe it's even possible. And the first thing I always say is, it's time to destroy your self-limiting beliefs because we all have them, to some extent. Obtaining the grades you dream of is absolutely achievable if you believe it is. In the words of Will Smith, 99% of people are not willing to do what it takes to make their dreams come true. The center of bringing any dream into fruition is self-discipline. It's about being in control of your mind to choose actions that are in your own best interest. Every day we are choosing to procrastinate, and that's just not in our own best interest. Right now you're not letting yourself reach your dreams. Fault and responsibility do not go together. It sucks, but they just don't. When we blame someone else, it's us pushing the responsibility to them and trying to get them to fix it. But that's not how it works especially when it's about your own studying. Your studying, your life, your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone. As long as we're pointing the finger and stuck in whose fault something is, we're jammed and trapped in victim mode. And when we're in victim mode, we're stuck in suffering. The road to power is in taking responsibility. And if you still can't muster up enough self-discipline to start studying, try this. Close your eyes. Envision what it feels like when you're done. When you're done with your eight hours of studying, when you get to the exam hall and you open your exam paper and you quickly scan the questions and oh, pff, you know the answer to every single question. When you get your exam results and your friends ask what grade you got, and you can proudly tell them. When you're graduating with a 4.0 GPA, and your family are so proud to show you off, you can make it happen. 
to find out the six things that you can do specifically to improve your self-discipline as a student, click on the video on the screen. I think you're gonna love it, and I'll see you on the other side.